thing. It's Friday, I think. I'm going to sit here and let my face be frozen for a second. <laughs> I don't really know how that happens, where the thumbnail kicks in. <laughs> but the thumbnails often are hilariously funny, so I thought I'd be still. <laughs> let it get my real face and not some crazy face. <sighs> Friday let's see who wants to come to the playground it's kind of a crazy time to be alive so here we are again trying to help each other through it so that's my job today good morning I think that's you Melanie good morning good morning how are you I have arrived I did decide to come to the playground today yesterday I just wasn't up to the playground I had a lot of things to get done yesterday so good morning I see too is that you Maybe Annie, <laughs> Erica, Erica, good morning. I'm in a lot of stillness today. I realize that there's changes underfoot again. <clears throat> good morning, Laura, how are you? There's changes underfoot again with me. So I'm, um, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like this work that we have been doing <laughs> in the past, this is, you know, I keep saying so oftentimes I'll say, well, we're in it now. It's, this is really it. We've been being prepared for something. We've been working hard to build our energy to get ourselves to a place where we can really <clears throat> do some some crazy energetic work on the planet to make changes. And and I keep saying, okay, we're in it. And then it gets more intense. And then I'm like, okay, we're really in it now. And then the next time it's like, okay, we're really, really in it now. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are feeling the same way I am, but I feel like I'm really having to work hard emotionally. <clears throat> this past month especially has been a true challenge for many of us. It's not just me. So I am aware that I signed on for this. This is why I came here. And I think that this morning I'm aware of my ab ability or my acceptance of my aloneness. Does that make sense? I think this past week has been me having to learn that whatever goes on whoever comes into this world with me whoever goes out that no matter what happens that being alone is perfectly okay not only okay it's really really beneficial and it's not necessarily the way that my psyche wants it to be my psyche wants to have a partner my psyche wants to be with someone to walk hand in hand through this life my psyche really wants that and yet my higher self says okay you're completely okay good morning to that you're completely okay, even if you are all by yourself, physically. You're never alone. So I've had to really do some heavy work. And it requires a lot of releasing of energy, a lot of acceptance, letting go of the life rope. I say that we talk about it often. I'm, I'm big on holding on to the life rope. I think all of us are, no matter what. You know, I watched the Titanic probably, I don't know how many times. And I've put myself in the place of being in that kind of situation where how many times do we watch movies where everything, the world is falling apart. Everybody is probably going to die except for the main characters of the movie. Probably everybody's going to die. And life is so much like that too. And I wonder sometimes if I were in that position where death was imminent. Do you remember if, if you've watched the Titanic? Um... You still don't like it. I don't. I don't really like it either, Erica. But I'm dealing with it. Let's just say that. Good morning, Annie. Um, but in the Titanic, <clears throat> it's really. I didn't even think about how how perfect it is for what I'm talking about. If you watch that movie, it's like the whole everything's falling apart. Everybody, you got some people. Watch how people are reacting. It's like life. There's some people that are fighting for the lifeboat. They will throw everybody else overboard in order to get to the lifeboat. There's there's a lot of people like that on the planet. There are people who sat down calmly, who laid their children down to bed and waited for the end. There were people who reached out to help whoever they could, but kept on going, kept on fighting, fighting, fighting. They weren't going to let go. They were going to keep on fighting. They were going to keep clinging to hope that maybe they could get through it. There was people playing music trying to calm everyone else. They were there too. They were the calmers. They were the ones to try to help people remain calm, whatever was going on, to just keep playing that music, keep keep people in that state of peace, no matter what. 
and look around the earth now you know that movie is perfect it's exactly what we're in now there's so much unrest there's so many crazy things going on so we all have our, our purpose here don't we some of us are playing music to keep the others calm <laughs> some of us are reaching out a hand to pull people up out of the fire or whatever it is we're, we're physically getting in there emotionally getting in there spiritually getting in there empaths are big on that we're always energetically reaching to lift others out of the fire um, there's many on the earth who are running for the lifeboats no matter who they shove down in the process to get to that lifeboat they're going to get to the lifeboat <laughs> we know a few of them i'm sure you know a few um, Jurassic Park right now, yeah, it does feel like a bit of Jurassic Park. Yes, Billy Zane is in that movie. <laughs> so, um, who are you? Who are you? Hi, Angel. Good morning. Good morning, Carol Ann. So, I, I wonder sometimes when I think about that movie, we're talking about the Titanic, which, what would I be? If we, if we were in the age of the Titanic right now, truly, <laughs> like, I feel like we are like our ship feels like it's sinking like everybody's gonna end up at the bottom of the ocean in the ice water if we don't do something we have to cling we hold on to everything we can get a hold of that it's it's going down it's tipping and it's like okay start grabbing life ropes start whatever you can get a hold of hold on with everything that you've got and then you got the ones that are laying down and they're they're gonna just put their babies to sleep you know just lay down go to sleep sweethearts it's gonna be okay whatever happens it's gonna be okay you got the ones that are that are trying to save the world. <laughs> there's so many different characters. There's so many different moving parts on the planet right now, aren't there? So many moving parts just in your existence alone. You you experience so many different characters. When you watch the news, you're like, oh, there are the lifeboat guys and girls. They're the ones that are reaching for the lifeboat. They're running for it. They don't care who they run over. <laughs> They're going to get to that lifeboat. There's a lot of them. I have like this strange energy about me today because I feel as if I want to I've always been one of those people that's always reached out trying to help everyone else out but I have a strange calm about me it's almost like okay the ship is sinking maybe it's time that I just go ahead and lay down put the babies down to bed and let the world ravage and go crazy and sink right away and I'm not saying that like, oh, suicide or giving up or anything. I'm saying that maybe I've been holding on so tightly to the way that I think the world should operate, the way that I think other people should act, the way that I think other people should treat me, the way that everything, I've been holding on to so many life ropes, my belief system, my way of doing things, my the way that I wish the world could be. <clears throat> maybe I need to stop trying so hard. Maybe I need to just be willing to be that <clears throat> excuse me, that mama that, that lays down in, in her cabin, puts her babies down to bed and says, you know what? I accept. I'm willing to accept whatever, whatever happens. I can't keep fighting. I've been really struggling with some fears this past month. I've been really, this is good where I am now. This sense of peace, the sense of letting go. I'm just sitting here. I'm just being calm. <laughs> There are things that are completely out of our control. That's the truth. It's just the truth. We can't control how everyone else is going to react to things. We can't control... Um, we, there's no way that we can physically stop those people that are running from the lifeboats that are hurting other people. We can, we can be calm. We can lay in that cabin and we can energetically send peace and love. <laughs> we can try to be that presence. And that's a really good place to be right now, I think. That's what I think. I don't want to fight politics. I don't even have the energy. I posted something a little while ago from the movie The Green Mile. I'm tired, boss. I'm tired of the status quo. I'm tired of watching people hurt one another. I'm tired of the arguments. I'm tired of one against the other always always we can sit here this morning and look at the headlines and donald trump has been diagnosed with covid he's positive for covid okay so one side of the one bunch of people are saying it that it's a political move the other bunch of people are saying it's a political move but they're all saying it for different reasons and it's like you guys you got no idea you got no idea you really don't have any idea you don't know if he's 
if he's truly sick. You don't know. About, how about we just find compassion? Just like everyone else that we would find compassion for on the planet. There's a good possibility that he's very sick. There's a good possibility that his wife is very sick. There's a good possibility that the guy down the street is really sick. There's a good possibility that we are really sick. There's a good possibility for a lot of things. Can we just look upon one another with compassion? I have my stand too. I, I know what I stand for politically. And yet the truth is, is I can't control any of it. <laughs> There's none of it that's in my control. And I feel as if it's just one more way that we choose to separate from one another. We have skin color. We have uh, sexual orientation. We have male, female. We have belief systems. We have political parties. We have so many things. We have different countries and different states and different ways of looking at life. And some of us are from the south and some of us are from the north and some of us have stars and some of us don't have stars. <laughs> Dr. Seuss was, a mirror, was, was an absolute genius. Some have stars on ours and some don't. <laughs> Let's all go back to story time. Let's all go back to story time. Let's all read a little Dr. Seuss today. So that's what I said when I, when I wrote on this this morning. I feel like I'm going back to Oz. I feel like it's time to go back into my own little world of writing and walking with my earbuds in and listening to fairy tale music and allowing the world to just spin around me while I create this beautiful inner world that is filled with hope, that's filled with love, that's filled with happily ever afters. I choose happily ever after. I don't choose one political party over another. I choose that everyone on this planet would finally find their happily ever after. That's what I choose. So I'm going back into my world. I did this after Steve died. For some reason, I felt really, really drawn to listen to music from fairy tales. And I would go off into the woods, walking quietly by myself, and I would envision fairies. And I would see, you wouldn't believe all the animals that would come to me. When I was in that mode, I saw, I actually rescued a baby fox. I saw a fox family for a long time. I found this baby fox beside the road. I thought it had died and I reached out to touch it. It was still alive and it was sick and I was able to rescue it. But, but in, during that time, there was pure magic. I could walk out in the woods and suddenly the electricity would be all around me. And it would be like I stepped into a fairy tale forest. And I found Steve. That's when I really found Steve was out there in the woods. So I'm going back going back to my fairy tale world because I believe that every one of us is very very powerful and that our thoughts our dreams our intentions our imaginations are extremely powerful much more powerful than these words that come flopping out of our mouths <sighs> I try not to go too deeply into it but I because I've been there where I've really really said ugly things because of politics it's been a while <laughs> I've raised I've pulled myself up out of it probably back but it was a long time ago when I said I won't talk politics anymore and I'm I still every time I start to fall into it I'm like oh, I feel ugly and icky icky I don't want that stuff in me so how about instead of talking politics how about instead of talking really really you know all the things that knowledge brings how about we go back into our wisdom how about we go back into the truth of who we are? Every one of us is a princess. Every one of us is a magical creature. Every one of us. Every one of us, deep down inside, is pure love. And absolutely powerful, amazing. Every one of us. We have this core that is like so beautiful that if we were able to lay, look at it with our physical eyes, we would fall flat on our faces and we'd probably be blind. That's you. You have the energy of all of creation within you. Why, why, why do you think so small? Why do you think that you have to be ruled by political parties? Why do you think that you are just this helpless pawn on the planet? Why do you think that you have to be ruled by credit scores? Psst. Or the amount of money that you got in the bank or the amount of property that you own or don't own or what neighborhood you live in or what car you drive or why why the truth is you're amazing every bit as amazing as every other creature on the planet every single one of us is an equal playing ground we're all we're all capable of creating such a beautiful existence here 
And yet we sit around thinking that we're small. We think that people that have tons of money, they are the ones that are in power. And that's just false belief system. It's not true. It's not true. Nothing can make anyone more powerful than you. Nothing can make you more powerful than them. We're all on an equal playing field here. We all have access to this beautiful energy of the creator. All of us do. But so few of us take the time to sit down on that bathroom floor and say, okay, bring it. Most powerful moment I ever had in my life. Most powerful moment I ever had in my life was the moment when I said, I'm not letting this man die on me. I want it. Whatever it is that, I, that you can give to me to help him to heal, please bring it. Please bring it. Please bring it. I sat there and I begged and I pleaded and I said, I am open to whatever I am. Bring it. I called on everyone I could think of. <laughs> I was calling on Jesus. I was calling on witches. He Kate, is that her name? I was calling on everyone that I thought possibly could help me to save this man. It wasn't my job to save him. It was my job to bring in the healing so I could comfort him in his final days. I know that now. But in that moment, in that desperation, in, it was the most desperate moment of my life, and it was the most powerful. It became the most powerful because in that desperation, I reached up and said, okay, hook me up. <laughs> whatever. I will give whatever I got to give, whether it be my life, whatever it is that I've got to give right now, I'm giving, I'm offering. And I allowed that energy to come flowing into me, and I have forgotten that. This past week, I've, I've forgotten how, what comes from those desperate moments what can come out of the most painful experiences that we've had in our lives what can happen and the truth is what can happen is absolute miracles they may not happen exactly the way you'd like them to happen Steve was not meant to stay in physical form but he was always meant to stay close to me he was always meant to be a part of me he was always meant to support me to love me, to help me to reach out and be more. And he did that beautifully. We did that together. We have this gorgeous, beautiful bridge between us. There's times when I let my vibration get too low. There's times when he pulls away from me so that I have a chance to grow. And in those moments I found this past week, I still fall down on my face. <laughs> I still get really hurt. I still get really lost. I feel so lonely when he does that. He's still teaching me. He's like, come on, girl, come on. Come on, you're so much bigger than this. You're so much bigger. You're not that little helpless child anymore. You're so much bigger. Just because I step away from you does not mean that you have to crumble into a pile of bricks or whatever I crumbled into, <laughs> a pile of crumbs. My sandcastle washed away, and I was just sitting there like a toddler on the beach crying because the waves came and washed my sandcastle away. But I can build it back up again, and I can build it bigger and stronger and I will never, ever, ever, no matter what, I will never be small, weak, useless, because I've found that inner strength. I may forget sometimes. <laughs> I may sit down and act like a toddler, maybe have a good temper tantrum. But within me is the power of all of creation. And so, in you. And so we rise again, don't we? Today. The energy is coming back in. That beautiful full moon is bringing it back in. Today we rise again like the phoenix out of the ashes. Here we go again. Let's rise back up again. The roller coaster ride, it makes these dips and curves and it can be scary and we're holding on and it can hurt and it can be, we can get so sad when it goes down low and we think, okay, the ride's over. I'm ready to get off. And then it takes off again, <laughs> it takes off again and it comes back up over another hill. And when you get up to the top of that hill, you're like, oh my gosh, look around me. It's, it's fabulous. This is the most amazing adventure I've ever had. Don't be afraid to live it. It's the worst thing that's going to happen. Do you know, I, I have to spend time on that, the Titanic again. I have to spend time on that. I, for the past couple of weeks, I would say, well, the worst thing that's going to happen, I've actually been saying this for a while, the worst thing that's going to happen is that I'm going to die. That's not the worst thing. That's not the worst thing that could happen to me. The worst thing that could happen to me is another big loss. And so that's what I've been working my way through this past couple of weeks. I can die. I'm not afraid to die. I kind of look forward to that moment someday. I'm not in any hurry for it. 
but I look forward to, to finally being face to face with Steve and with everyone that I've lost. I look forward to that day of no longer being weighed down by all these crazy things around this earth. And yet I know that I have work to do and I know that I'm going to stick around. But if I live in the fear of loss, if I stay in the place of loss, then I will never fully allow myself to love. I will never fully allow myself to, to live. I will continue to stay in this place of fear and it cripples me. It holds me like a cage and I can't stand to be caged. So this past week has been a lot of inner week, inner work, week and work. It's been a lot of, I have got to come to the place, of course I'm not afraid to die, but I'm afraid of death, of other people. I'm afraid of loss. I still have a huge, huge fear of loss. I still have a huge fear of everything falling apart and that and that plays out into my scarcity mode of losing everything again. I have a couple of big fears and until I address those fully, until I let go and go into that cabin down deep in the ship's belly and say, okay, bring it. If the water's going to come and wash me away, I got to be willing to just sit there. I'm going to tuck my babies in. And I'm going to sit there and just let it happen. We're going to go out together. And it's going to be okay. And if it doesn't wash me away, then I'm okay too. All of those loved ones that I hold so dearly, I can't hold on to them as tightly as I have been. I can't be so afraid of loss that I hold them so tightly that they can't breathe. Does that make sense? None of us is ever guaranteed this life is going to last forever, right? In this split second, right here, right now, I could lose this existence. And so I have to be willing. <laughs> I see that people are popping out. It's, just, it's a heavy conversation, isn't it? It's really heavy because we're all so programmed to hold on tightly to the life ropes. What are your life ropes? What do you have that you're holding on to so tightly that you're not willing to let go? Because it's in the letting go that we find. I found that so many times. It's in the letting go that we find. So can you let go and realize that that's when you get into the flow? Let go, get into the flow. Let go. Just let yourself flow on down that river. It's going to take you exactly where you want to go. Instead of trying to paddle upstream and make your life really, really difficult, can you just let go? I'm tired of holding on to the life rope. You know, I see these hands sometimes. They're just bleeding from holding on so tight. I've spent a whole lifetime holding on. Maybe it's time to just release and be okay with just letting it take me wherever it wants to take me. So, that's where I am today. <laughs> so, I'm going back to Oz. I'm going back to Fairyland. I hope that you'll go too. More and more and more. You can't stay there all the time, obviously. You got, you got to take care of life. But in those quiet moments, can you take some time to just allow yourself to go into a place of magic and wonder again, like a little child? I'm just going back into... My little child has been very neglected recently. She has been feeling very lost, very sad. I haven't been spending much time with her. <laughs> so... That part of me is going to get some attention, some big time attention. And I'm going to watch as I spend more time with my inner child. I'm going to watch this energy lift away because it truly is just pain. It's that pain of being small and afraid and out of control and neglected and all of those things that we've had from the time that we were very, very small. We carry those, whether we like it or not, we carry that energy. It just lodges in the body. So let's do that today. Let's unlodge it. Let's let, let's let our children, this is called the playground, come to the playground. And it was called come to the playground for a reason. The world was a very scary place when I started doing this six months ago. Everything was crazy. The whole, everything was shut down. You couldn't go outside of your house. It was a wild world and it's still that way. Really, it hasn't really changed. Even though we're allowed to go out with masks on our face, it's still a, a scary world. There's so much going on. It's still very scary. So we're going to do the same stuff we did six months ago. We're going to go in and we're going to enjoy being a child for a little while. We're going to have some imagination. We're going to have some fun together. Go ahead and get your feet down on the floor. 
Get your roots planted firmly. Be the tree for a few minutes. See those roots coming out of your feet. We want to feel at home here today. We're calling in the angels to help us to feel a sense of home, a sense of groundedness, a sense of peace. We so need this. We are called to do this. It is our job. But first and foremost, they want us to feel good and happy and joyful. That's a part of your job. <clears throat> I know for me, I've kind of forgotten my job. I kind of thought that <clears throat> a part of me kind of put myself aside again and said, nope, I got to take care of everybody else. I got to make sure everybody else is happy. And when we do that, we get very burned out. We have to take care of ourselves first. When you're on the airplane, they say, put your own mask on before you put it on your children. You got to take care of yourself first. Otherwise, you're, you're going to pass out. You're going to burn out. You're not going to have the energy to do anything for anyone unless you're taking care of yourself. So right here for about the next 10 minutes, I want you to truly take care of only you. You're not going to give any energy to the world. You're not going to give any energy to anyone else. You're not going to try to save anyone. This is your time. You are the one that's the most important being on the planet to you. And so for just a few minutes, you are going to feed your soul, your inner child, and take care of her or him, okay? So be in that place of me, me, me for a few minutes. Watch a toddler. If there's a if there's a big old if there's a bunch of cupcakes there, they're gonna make sure they get one of those cupcakes and they're gonna have it smeared all over their face. And they're not gonna sit there and go, oh, but what about so and so? They're just gonna enjoy that cupcake like there was like it's the best cupcake they ever had. <laughs> Let's have a little party. We're calling in the angels right now. We're calling in Archangel Michael right now, right now, to protect each one of us. An air of protection around you, around your home, around your land, around your cars, around your loved ones. We want everyone to feel protected and safe right now in this place. Now energy is lifting away. Very good for feeling safe. You're in a safe space. You can completely relax your body. So allow yourself to be relaxed and if there's any tightness anywhere in your body go ahead and tighten it up and then release right in here too don't get that big old wrinkle line right in here allow your forehead to feel relaxed letting that energy flow easily from the crown all the way up down see if the hand of all of creation come down over your head right now can you feel that heat Excellent. Beautiful energy is flowing already. So we're calling in any of the angels that want to, any, any of the angels from your teams, any of the archangels that want to join us. Archangel Raphael just popped in for some healing for whoever needs it. Thank you. We're calling in the playful angels, the little cherubs, the little chubby ones. Let's come on in and play. Come on in. Let's all go to the playground together. So as source is working its way through this energy, beautiful energy of all of creation, has come down over your crown, placing that beautiful crown on your head to remind you. Let's go into that fairy tale forest. You get to be the princes and princesses today. You get to, to create. You've got a wand in your hand, and you're going to create magic everywhere you go. Let's go into this beautiful fairy forest together. So feel that crown, the weight of it on your head. And as we're going in there to play, the energy is going to move. It's already moving on down through all of your chakras, cleansing, clearing, lightening you up, reminding you of your own playfulness, your joy. Your purpose is to enjoy yourself here. Please know that. There's a nice lift. Thank you. Somebody had a big old heavy weight on their chest and it just came off. That's beautiful. So let's envision ourselves going off into the fairy forest. See yourself in a long flowing gown if you'd like. <clears throat> if you'd rather the, the pantsuit like a prince with all the neat colors and garb that the prince would wear. Or this long flowing gown that's made out of this fabric that is nothing like you could ever imagine. You can barely even feel it. It just flows with you like water, like silky water all of your clothing there's nothing that feels heavy at all you feel all light and beautiful and easy as you step into these woods 
We're going to take a trail together. So step lightly into the woods. You can see the green, green moss everywhere you go. The trees, there's a little bit of dampness on them because it's been raining. So there's dew on everything you see. You might even spot a few spider webs that have dew drops on them. They're beautiful. The sun shines through them and there's little bitty rainbows. See that beautiful sunshine? It's coming down through the trees. It's making these beautiful little, little spots for the fairy stance. So there's a gentle breeze in the wind and as it's going through, the, the sun streaks are just kind of dancing. Can you see that? How beautiful it is? If you look closely, you'll see magical creatures here in the woods. I see a big old dragon, but it's shy and it's peeking around a great big tree. It's like, oh, here they come. I want to play. I wonder if they want to play too. I wonder if I'm brave enough to come out and play with them. What do you see? I hear heavy footsteps. It's, it's definitely coming to play. My dragon. My Oliver wants to take me for a ride today. I'm going to go climb on Oliver's back and I'm going to take a, there's a clearing. So we're going to take a little ride straight up through the trees and off into the sky. You may do whatever you like here in this beautiful fairy forest. There is castles to build, there's castles to play, and there's tree houses. There's fairies to fly with. There's troll bridges, beautiful trees. You can lay under a tree and look up at the sky. There's a clearing above you so you can see the clouds and see if there's any messages in the clouds. I see some treasure chests if you want to look for treasures. You get to do whatever you like. What do you see here? Let your imagination just soar. Hmm. Some of you have joined me in the sky. Let's go fly. I see some of you sliding down the water. There's a waterfall and you're sliding. You're having fun with that. Kicking and squealing and laughing and having fun. Let that child in you just just go wild and have crazy fun. I see a big wolf coming out towards one of you. That wolf wants you to hop on its back. Go ahead. See where that wolf wants to take you. You can go. There's nothing here that will hurt you. I promise. You're completely safe. Those of you who are playing in the water, there's little chubby angels in there with you, splashing, kicking, having fun, swimming a little bit, diving down deep. See what you can find deep down in the water. You don't have to worry about holding your breath. You can, you can breathe underwater here. It's all pure magic. If you want to take that wand of yours and start touching things and creating beauty, I see, I see gold. I see rocks with with beautiful rivers of gold forming in them you're, as you touch your wand to things. You've got the Midas touch. You're creating beautiful golden statues. And Oh, touch the water. It's a river of gold now. How beautiful is that? If you're hungry, there's, there's this beautiful long table. It's a buffet. There's fresh fruit. All kinds of yummies. There's cakes and cupcakes and cheesecakes and bonbons, whatever you like. It's right there. You can eat as much as you like. You don't have to worry about it. It's not going to hurt your body at all. You can have as, whatever you like here. There's this mountain of ice cream I just saw. Did you see that mountain of ice cream? Go slide down and grab a sled. Go slide down that mountain of ice cream. I see Neapolitan. There's strawberry and there's vanilla and there's chocolate. You can pick your favorite. You can just scoop it up and eat it on the way down the mountain. There's a seal there that wants to play with you. The seal just plopped down on her belly and she's sliding down the ice cream mountain with you. I see a big smile on her face. Lots of energy in the heart. Make sure that you're breathing as you're going through. Take a big breath into the heart, allowing this sit up, sit up straight to allow this energy to flow throughout your body, bringing peace and joy to you today, lightening up the moods. Let's take away. Let's let's take away any of that heaviness today. We're asking all of the angels to lift that away for you today.
bring you a day filled with magic and joy, fairy tales, and happily ever afters. Lots of releasing. We're asking Archangel Michael to sever and release any cords or attachments. Anything that's holding you down, that's tethering you to this earth, we ask to have those released. No more heavy energy. Hi, Lily. Allowing yourself to feel lighter and free and able to fly. I see all of you out there in that fairy forest. Many of you have suddenly grown wings. Envision yourself with whatever kind of wings you'd like. It might be butterflies. It might be fairy wings or angel wings dragonfly wings, whatever you'd like. Just go ahead and fly through the sky. Join me. We're just flying, soaring like eagles. Your energy's moving down through that solar plexus now, just filling you with love today. They're just bringing you joy, absolute pure joy. Feel it filling every cell of your body. Continue to create this beautiful world in the fairy forest as that energy moves down through your second chakra and into the root. It's creating this firm foundation. It's taking away all those lower vibrational energies, creating space, new space for you to start again today. Brand new day coming back up out of the ashes. Lots of energy in the heart. Fill it up. Fill it up with love like a great big balloon. Just take it all in today. It's all yours today. You don't got to share anything. They're just filling you up. And as you soar through the sky, I want you to look down. I want you to see all of creation down there. That is so important for you to do, to remember that all of those things that are going on down there on that earth, now that you're looking down on them, they don't look so scary, do they? You're stronger. You have the power to overcome anything that comes into your life. Look down on them. They're just experiences. They can't control you anymore. All that's important is right here, right now. Just take a big breath. Your first breath is a brand new baby. Again, you've come back up out of the ashes. You're a beautiful phoenix flying through the sky. I want you to take a huge big breath and as you do that I want you to pull your higher self your little inner child all of you deeply into your heart space it's very cozy and comfortable and clear there now it's okay take a big breath perfect now as you <clears throat> as you rest there all of you together again can you feel that peace that's filling you, that inner child, thanking you? Tired, let's take that little inner child down in for a nap time, for a rest. A little milk and cookies is called for. Your higher self is holding that baby inside of you. All is, all is perfect, all is calm. One last big breath, and as you do that, you're integrating all this beautiful energy that you've just pulled into your body. And as you do that, we're asking Archangel Michael to wrap you up in safety and protection today. Beautiful bubble around you. Wherever you go, you are perfectly protected. Take a big breath. And we are thanking the angels, thanking your guides, thanking these beautiful teams that have come together to help us today. Each one of you is stepping away with a new guide. It's your gift. They're like, okay, you each get one. So whoever watches this, pay attention. Pay attention. You have a new helper amongst you. See if you can feel that energy. It may be an animal. It may be an angel. It may be an archangel that's going to stay with you. It may be a loved one who's already passed. Whoever it is, take their hand and know that they're there with you today and forever helping you through this difficult time, lightening you up, reminding you to laugh and enjoy life. And we're thanking all those angels and all those guides today. And I'm thanking all of you for joining us here, for sharing this beautiful energy. 
I greatly appreciate you. I can't tell you how much. And I love you guys. I will do my best to get back here tomorrow. I'll do my best to get here every day. Some days it just doesn't come together, but I'll do my best. Please take good care of yourselves today. I love you so much, and I will see you again soon. Bye for now. Thank you, Julie. Bye. Nice to see you, Julie. Catch up to us, okay? Take good care, guys. Bye.